Good morning. Ooh. Thanks for uh, getting up so early on a very uh, day three of a very packed schedule, both days, workshops, and evenings. So I'm Christine Mohan from Kilt, I'm VP Business Development there. I also manage uh, community marketing PR, very small lean team. I'm really excited to tell you uh, what we've been up to. Before I was uh, with uh, Polkadot, I was uh, CMO of uh, Web3 Foundation, working on branding and building the Polkadot and Kusama and Substrate ecosystems. And before that, um, so I've been in blockchain about five years. Before that, I was with um, Civil, which was a media platform, um, which was a project of consensus, so built on Ethereum. So first off, thank you, organizers. This has been an amazing experience. It's uh, been really great to actually see people in person, not just on a screen, not just as an avatar on Telegram. Been, uh, it's really hard to talk about um, how difficult the last couple of years has been be between winter, between COVID, between all the building that the people in our ecosystem have been doing, a um, lot of hours. And so it's really great to actually enjoy each other's company and actually see how other folks are doing, challenges, sharing best practices. So hello and welcome back. I think Dan said it really well when he tweeted out the first day that we really needed this. So quickly, we'll talk a little bit about where we are in this evolution from Web 2 to Web 3. Um, Kilt protocol, so we launched as a blockchain, I'm sorry, a parachain on Kusama back in September, and then we Quickly decentralized, uh, by November we were live, and then we started launching pretty rapidly uh, a number of applications built on Kilt. And so the little hierarchy here is Bot Labs is our corporate entity, the initial creator of Kilt Protocol, which is now fully decentralized. We've also spun off a subsidiary called BTE, um, Bot Labs Trusted Entity, and so that's the branding that you see, but everything is within the Kilt uh, ecosystem. So I'll go through very briefly um, what we've built and the consumer and business applications for this. So um, there's been, of course, any time you're building new um, bleeding edge technology, there's been a couple of bumps along the way. I think it's, um, there are still perceptions out there that Web 2 is free, even though, of course, what you're paying with is your own data. People see Web 3 as being paid. Uh, there's a lot uh, of news coverage about, especially in the last uh, six to eight months, uh, NFTs, DAOs, metaverse, and which are all absolutely exciting and pushing this industry forward really quickly. But in some ways, we're getting farther and farther away from mainstream and farther away from the consumer. And so it's something we really have to kind of measure and balance so that is, even though we're going forward and we're seeing new forms of digital um, asset ownership through NFTs, et cetera, there's still, we've got to keep bringing the consumer along or else uh, mainstream adoption is just going to take a lot longer. And of course, DeFi dominating the headlines, but there's still a lot of other interesting verticals in the space, and we want to keep making sure that they get coverage as well. So the good news is we've had huge growth, parachains obviously, interoperability, and also you know, looking beyond our own um, kind of polka dot bubble, there's great work going on in other chains, there's great developer outreach going on with Cosmos, especially with Near. so I think it's important that we learn from other ecosystems as well as building out our own. Um, what's been really interesting for Kilt in particular, we chose Substrate um, because um, of the underlying cost structures with Ethereum. So our founder, Ingo, comes from a business background, software entrepreneur, um, CTO of Axel Springer. And so as he was kind of building the idea for an identity protocol, he was talking with businesses um, and trying to explain that uh, transactions are, fle uh, are fluctuating wildly, and no one can build a business like that. You have to have a predictable business model, you have to be able to structure your pricing, and uh, that was impossible. So he found um, Substrate and been with this ecosystem ever since. And then um, what we're working on now, Kilp particularly, is moving from blockchain business cases to, to business. So first off, I need to talk a little bit about digital identity. We don't really think about identity. Um, we've actually given it over a long time ago to the Facebooks of the world. We sign in, we give away lots of data every day. That data is siloed, it's monetized, it's retargeted, and it's no longer in our control. So it's really important that um, in the day-to-day -day we kind of understand what the pieces are to an identity. So identity starts with an identifier. That is your face, that is your name, that is your fingerprint. These things are inherent to you. And then you layer on credentials. And as you layer on a credential like a passport, a driver's license, um, maybe a university diploma, these things start to build out your identity. But um, even though we've trusted um, the established model of trust in, the, in these types of credentials has been going on for you know, hundreds of years. Passports work really well. 
But there are also some flaws here. Uh, for instance, um, I grew up in Boston, in the US. For a long time, um, your driver's license actually had your social security number on it, which is really a disaster, right? You lose your license, um, you've got a lot of data that's actually potentially stolen. So there's a lot of um, growth and opportunity with a digital identity. And the next step of that is actually a um, decentralized identifiers, or DIDs. So these are a way to both um, protect your identity, to have a unique identity, a digital fingerprint, and then also for it to be verifiable and for it to be decentralized. There is no central controller, no central repository for this DID. And so at Kilt, you add credentials to your DID, and that actually creates your identity. So um, right now, again, we talk about silos. All your information is in what's basically a honeypot for hackers. Each time you go to these websites, each time you use your Facebook login, they get to capture that data. They keep that data. You don't know where it is. You don't know how long it's used. And then you use that to sign into various services. You go onto a website, subscription website, New York Times. Maybe you sign up for Trello. You keep using your um, password through Facebook. That means that all that information is retained. So what Web3 does is it actually makes it more central for the user, literally user-centric, puts the user in the center. Then you actually have your credentials. You are then actually the person who decides that they go to this verifier. And then you actually get to use the blockchain to make that happen. So a little bit about Kilt. Um, Kusama Parachain just secured our second slot. So we're really happy now that after the fundraising and all the excitement of Parachain auctions and crowd loans, we can actually continue building and launching services. And what we, um, I'll go through very briefly is that the services we're launching are not just for humans, but you can actually have anything can have an identity. So machines, uh, IoT, trees, pets, uh, there's lots of applications and sustainability and things like that. All right, very briefly, Social KYC, um, all these services are free. Uh, Social KYC, we all know the KYC process, passports, all of that, really fun. Uh, Social KYC is a way to prove your internet identity. So through the service, very quickly, you're able to actually show that you control your Twitter account, Discord, Twitch, email address. That's captured within Social KYC, but Social KYC actually then forgets the data. So as you're using this, your credential stays with you under your control. You're also deciding when you're sharing it and how. You can also delete your credentials. And so basically, as you're going through your websites and signing up, for instance, again, media sites is the easiest way to think about this. You can just sign in with KYC, and then they know that your Twitter has been verified. They know that the social KYC knows that this is your email address. And there's also enterprise applications. So um, GDPR is obviously a very, um, very uh, complicated, uh, something to be uh, compliant with as a media company, many companies actually. And so, it's actually really helpful for a media company. They're quite interested in this because they do not have to retain any of this data. They don't have to keep these databases. They don't have to make this information available if someone requests the data. And gaming actually is also a very big uh, use case for us. I'm very happy to say we just hired someone who will be our relationship manager for gaming influencers. There's applications on the gaming entity side. There's applications on the gamer side. You can actually use social KYC to prove <laughs> If you want to use your passport or driver's license, you could actually prove your um, age if you're perhaps doing uh, esports, you know, youth sports. Um, you can use it to prove your credentials. You can use it to actually say you are this YouTuber, you are this influencer. It also helps with matching, it helps with um, preventing counterfeit, pre um, preventing cheating. And then as we go and look forward, um, it'll be very interesting to start looking as the DAOs and as Metaverse need verification layers. It has another application there. So this is what Sporon looks like. It's our browser extension wallet. Pretty simple. We're still um, iterating on the design, but it's actually um, two functions. It operates like a typical wallet, so it stores your coins, and it, you can sign transactions with that but it also is a way for creating and holding your digital identity, your decentralized identity. And there's also, this is where you would store your credentials. So as I've added credentials to my wallet, I've got Discord in there, my email, my Twitter, and then I decide who I'm going to portion those off to. Then we actually added the next application, and these all work together, and we're kind of building around trips. So you can have your credentials, use them for signing, use them for a validator, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we've all used uh, 
uh, more centralized signing systems, I would say. If you've signed a contract, if you've done a real estate deal, if, you sign, um, if you've sold a company, uh, you're often using something like DocuSign, and your documents live with them, their databases. Uh, we decided to take a different decentralized approach with DID Sign. And so only you and the recipient have access to these files. All through the browser, not stored anywhere, only the hash is stored. And it's verifiable. So if you've ever been in a multi-sig, so to speak, um, transaction, you're never sure who is signed when, and you're actually never sure if the document signed and the document countersigned are the same document. With DID sign, you can actually, um, as a verifier looks at it, if it's been changed at all during the signing process, it will be rejected. So it's a very easy way to see a verification layer. And also, it's a little bit more than just documents and PDFs. You can sign video, you could sign software, you can sign um, quite a few different types of files. And you can also send it pretty frequently or conveniently, not just with email, but also anything you want, basic email, Telegram, WhatsApp. And then it's free. So you would need a Sporon wallet, and you'll need an on-chain DID, which is a deposit of two kilt. And that's for you to be able to sign within this uh, software. But um, someone who's verifying doesn't need any of that, does not need uh, any kilt, doesn't need any knowledge of blockchain. They just need to verify. So it's a pretty simple UI. Sign on the left-hand side, drag, literally drag your file in, sign it, and then send. The verifier then clicks on the right-hand tab, verifies, drags, and then you'll see the actual credentials associated with that document. So the use cases we're seeing as we go out to um, uh, talk about the different verticals with this. We're seeing tons of interest from media in particular and hospital settings. Uh, doctors want to be able to send very quickly, maybe a lab report. Um, as we know, hospitals that are varying levels of uh, tech sophistication, they need something that's fast, they need something that's private. So that's a really interesting use case. We're seeing media wants to use it for things like signing video. If you have a reporter out in the field, you want to make sure that the video they shot and sent to you hasn't been altered or changed. Developers, you could sign your code. You could say that it hasn't been changed. And for Web3 signing contracts, there's going to be lots of uh, assets in DAOs and Metaverse. They're going to need to be signed. And so for these types of decentralized uh, ownership mechanisms, you really need decentralized signatures. We don't want to be dragging Web2 um, medium into Web3 worlds. So we also have started integrating our services again in this basically a circle. We've got social KYC. So as I verify these files, it pops up with my DID string, and then it pops up with the service endpoints, anything I've associated as a credential with my DID. So for here, it's my email address, and I've used social KYC to, to automatically make that happen. And it makes it very easy for someone who doesn't know anything about blockchain, anything about on-chain DIDs. They just see, this is me, and this is my credential. And then next comes um, our newest service is Web3 Name. So it's basically a very simple way to show my name rather than that long string of, of numbers and characters. So we just launched this last week at a Paris blockchain. It's a custom way to represent that long string, that really confusing, scary string of data. And you can customize it with your first name, first name, last name, with your business name. And it personalizes your identity, but there's also a way to bring it across the Polkadot ecosystem. So if I'm a validator on multiple chains, I can use one Web3 name across all of them. And it helps me build my brand. It helps me build my credibility. And it helps add a layer of verification and validity to my identity. And then, um, actually, it came out of a discussion with Akala. They were looking for ways to do this. So we um, built it, and we actually layered on a couple other things. And now it's live. We are doing a free promo uh, for another week or so for the Dotsama community. You can actually go set up your Sporon, get your free on-chain DID, Web3, Web3 name, really easy. And then if you stake with us, this is our stake board platform, you can actually see that people are already using it. So we've got Timo, the collator. We've got Stakely. We've got Staking for All. Shez is up there. So you can actually use it for branding, right? You can say, OK, as a delegator, I can actually know who I'm actually going to work with. So about 8,000 names have been claimed in the last week or two. So it's definitely um, an idea that has some resonance, easy to use, and eventually we want to actually move it beyond um, Polkadot ecosystem to other addresses like ETH addresses. And then just as in a little extra, we built uh, a lookup. So you can actually take Web3 name Christine, type me in, and then you'll actually get the string. This is Ingo. These are the endpoints. He's attached with credentials. And you can see this whole thing very easy. So if you're signing a document with DID sign, you can quickly go here and make sure that the Ingo that you're signing with is also the Ingo that you want to be working with. 
So, um, in the last year or two, we've been really fortunate to team up with the different partners. This certainly doesn't represent everyone we're talking with, but these are the live deals. Um, we're also talking with a couple of folks in the NFT, gaming, and metaverse space, and I hope by this time next year, this is even more packed. But what I do want to say is there are identity needs for most projects, and we're happy to talk. We're also, after going through the parachain uh, lease process and auction process, also really happy to talk to new projects about that. So that's the legal slide that I'm required to do. <laughs> and that's thank you. So this is where to find me, and this is where to find Kilt. Thanks very much, and have a great conference.